Welcome everyone. People call me Miss Boba. I have been a software engineer for 15 years now. Uh, and my specialization is web development. I love web development. It's how I learned to uh, program by making fandom websites a long time ago. And it's always been one of my passions. In particular, I think it's a really, really great way for people to express themselves. So I'm really excited about bringing web development to more fandom people, because I'm sure with the right tool, fandom people will make extremely amazing websites. So speaking of making websites, this is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, this is a, a mock of the, our own landing page for a new website and you know we'll with time we'll build this up more but for now this is what i want to have at uh the end of the day this stream will probably last one or one hour one hour and a half uh we will see and you know if people have energy after we can always stay a bit longer but really i think you know, even if you can stay not for very much, very long, uh, the really cool part that you're gonna be seeing is how we can use Git and GitHub, which is the, uh, the subject of our first volume, to deploy a website in a modern way. It's going to make it super easy. Uh, and so, you know, it's not gonna take us very long to get there. So, yeah. Let's get started. So I'm going to start from VS Code. This is my favorite um, code editor. Kind of like the state of the art right now. Most people use it and it has, uh, it's made by Microsoft who also owns GitHub. Um, so, you know, for how much you might, one might not like Microsoft, it has a very good integration there. Um, but I actually happen to love it a lot. So let's see, let's start. I, oh wait, I can also do the screencast mode. So you should see, see, you see what I type. So right now, all I've done is I created this Fuja web dev folder on my computer and I entered it with VS code and opened uh, the system there. So there is not particularly much you know, that I've done until now. Um, okay, first thing I want to do is I want to create a Git repository uh, here. And what that will allow me to do is as I go create uh, and change my files, a Git repository will allow me to move back and forth in my code history. So for example, if I make changes that I want to undo, uh, that becomes really, really easy using Git. Or if I want to kind of diverge my code. So if I want to keep my website as is, but then have a separate version of my code with more experimental things, um, I can work on them completely separately without these two things overlapping each other. And yeah, that, you know, I, it's very useful. It is very useful. And once you start, you, you don't, you don't go back. And this is actually fairly easy. So we are going to start with typing one command and this is going to assume that you have already installed Git. Um, and we will have instructions once we start getting everything out, but you can Google it. So the command is simply git init. You click it and then it says initialized empty git repository. That's it. It's done. Now this is a git repository and we can double check this by doing git status. And here it says on branch main, no commits yet. Oh, wait, let me put this back up. Okay, um, nothing to commit. This is, this is it. This is basically saying here, you have a Git repository. Um, you have a branch. We'll see what a branch is that it's called main. And you have made it, you have not made any commit. And we'll see also what a commit is in a little bit. So 
To see what a commit is, we start with creating our first file. Touch is a command to create uh, files, very useful. And we do an index.html file. And now in my file explorer, here is my index.html. Uh, ESLint um, is telling me things, but that doesn't matter. And so we, um, we can see now that if I go to the terminal again, and now I type git status, there is a file. So again, same message as before. There is the branch main, no commit, but now it talks about having an untracked file. So index.html. And what's, what's that saying is, oh, there is a new file that Git has not seen before. Uh, which makes sense. We haven't uh, really filled it, but the file is now there. So let's start, first of all, filling it. I have actually prepared some of this before. I'm going to try and talk through the code, even though some of it is going to be copy pasted. Uh, so first of all, what we want to do is just put up a basic, basic website. So that's going to be copy and pasting some boilerplate like I, you know, uh, you can learn this thing by art and like do it, but I just copy paste. Um, let's put in some, let's put in some useful things like the title, which is the title of our page. Um, this meta tag that you kind of want to always have, also char set. These are, this is pretty much boilerplate stuff. We will look at the, at the, uh, other properties later. And then here, let's just put, uh, H1, which is a, a big title, well, big header that says, welcome to the Fujo guide website. That's our first file. Um, Nina's like, heck yeah, boilerplate. Yes, I love copy and pasting boilerplate. L let's make sure that this is doing what we want it to do. And I am going to use this NPX thing. Do not worry about it. We're not going to explain it, but it's cool. Um, let's go to the browser and let's confirm that we have our website running and there it is the the website is up this is on my local machine as you can see from the url uh which is wait let me see if I, oh that does not become bigger um but it is on 127.0.0.1 which is my local machine um so that's this is running on my local one but going back to get MVS code. Now that I have confirmed that my website is indeed working, the next step is I want to save this. Um, because if I mess up after this, this is a, a good state that I want to be able to come back to. So just checking with Git status again. Um, Everything seems how as I expected. It's, it has an untracked file, so a new file that is index.html. Um, and I want to save it. So I'm going to add all the files that I have untracked. Uh, I can do that with git add dot. Uh, I can also, since it's just one file, I can also just specify the name. And now that I've done this, I can use git status. And you can see that new there is a change to be committed so while before it said there there was an untracked file now it is tracking this file and it's re it correctly identified it as a new file and now it's ready to be committed and committed is like committing to memory like gets memory you know it's gonna remember this file in the state that it currently is and to do it i just type git commit minus M to give it a message. Um, and I will say added 
HTML boilerplate. That's it, it's there. You can see main root commit added HTML boilerplate, one file change with 13 insertions, that's the number of, of uh, lines I have. Um, it's done, that's it. I can go look at my logs and here it will say that my HTML boilerplate has been added. Um, that, that's it, that's really simple. And we can see later how this is, how can I move across the code, um, different like code changes, but <laughs> Git is so happy you committed to him, yes. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it is my commitment to him to, to add the boilerplate. So what I wanna show here is how we can very, very simply and very, very easily um, use this Git repository that I have made to uh, deploy this website. So we go now to my browser and we go to, and I actually haven't checked that I logged in there, uh, but let's see, we go to GitHub. Oh, I am logged in there. Um, so now, um, now we are on GitHub. GitHub is a website that can host your Git repositories in a centralized cloud place. Um, it is also a catboy with tentacles. But <laughs> um, catboy with tentacles aside, yes, you can upload uh, your repository, so the, what, the one I just created on my computer to the cloud, and you can do this to share code with other people, but also for other people to collaborate together on your code. Um, and this may seem like very complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. So I have created a new repository and I am going to call it Fujo Web Dev. Um, description, um, the website for the Fujoshi Guide to Web Development and let's not add anything because that's going to make it easier for us. I'm going to make this public so you will be able to see it. Let me copy this into the chat. The, okay. So that's where the code is going to live uh, and now GitHub actually very, very usefully uh, gives me the command to, uh, to synchronize my, uh, the, the code I have in my local computer and my local repo with the one that I just created on GitHub. Um, and it's literally just this one, git remote add origin, git at github.com, essential randomness, fujawebdep.get. I'm gonna run it and then I'm gonna show you and then we're gonna talk a little bit about that command. So back to, let's do this bot one. Uh, back to here, I will once again move this one a little bit up. Oh, okay, okay, yes. Um, I am going to run this command. And that's running, that ran. Um, and you can see this by doing git remote minus v. So here it's showing that we now have a remote called origin, which is the address that I gave to it. Um, I think that's an SSH address. Doesn't really matter. GitHub will tell you. Um, and so what, what from now? We have cre established this connection uh, called origin uh, between my, fi my repository and the one on GitHub. And so now that this connection is created, I can just do git push origin main. So this is going to push to the origin connection, uh, my main branch, and I enter and it says a bunch of things. 
And now when I refresh the browser, you can see here that I have index.html on, on GitHub. And if you, if you refresh the link that I put in before, you will see it. You will see exactly the same code as is on my laptop. And this is already pretty cool. Um, you can imagine why. Um, but what is even cooler is this. So now that this repository lives on a cloud system like GitHub, I can use, uh, there's various of them, uh, but I can use a service that will automatically uh, take my code on GitHub and put it and sync it with an actual website. So the one I have, I'm going to show you today is called Vercel. Uh, Vercel.com is the address. Um, you know, it, it's actually really professional. Like this is one of the uh, leading uh, hosting services for like actual professional uh, website. And it has a bunch of advantages, but for, you know, for the purpose of the streaming, it, it really doesn't matter. It, what matters is it can just add new project here uh, and I've connected it to my GitHub repository, uh, my GitHub account already. Uh, so you can see here, I could clone a template or I can import a Git repository. Um, and so I am going to import the Fujo web dev that I uh, created two minutes ago. And after I click import, um, we don't need to worry about framework preset. This is a very simple website and we click deploy. And now we gave it a few seconds and ta-da, I can um, click on it. I will put this in the chat. It, it, it automatically got its own uh, its own address and everything, and it's done. That's it, it's up. And it was really, really easy, as you can see. You just, you just need to connect your GitHub, um, and it, it's there. Nothing, nothing too, nothing complicated to set up. Uh, but this is not even the simplest, uh, no, not even the coolest thing that you can do. So to see, how to make this even cooler, let's start actually modifying our website. So uh, as a reminder, this is what we're going to be creating. And this is the local version of it that I have currently running. Um, and you can see it in, um, as you can see from this bar up top. And so let's go back to VS Code. Let's close this terminal window and let's start filling this one up. So how, what do we start with? Um, well, first of all, let's start just, uh, let, let me, let me do the bot one, the bot view. And so then I can talk about the, how to do this. Um, so we can, to, uh, sorry. So here we want to replicate this layout, obviously. And the easiest way to start is to put everything in, uh, everything in just simple HTML, no worry about styling yet. Um, and that's, that's it. Let's start with that. So, First thing we are going to do is I am just going to put in uh, the logo and the project and um, yeah, that seems about right. Let's start with this. So I am, uh, I need first of all to, to put our images in. So let me get our logo. 
let's see if I can just paste it in VS Code and if it works instead of dragging it. Uh, paste. There! Okay, logo is there. I'm gonna make an uh, images folder and I'm gonna put the logo in it. Uh, you can see now that these appear green, which means that they're new files that GitHub isn't tracking, uh, that Git isn't tracking yet. Um, so again, you can see this because if I, sorry, this is a small window. Because um, if I go git status, like I did before, it's telling me that images, it's a folder and that's completely untracked. So no file, all the files in there, it has not seen them before. Um, we could commit now, but you know, let me, let me just try, uh, there. Um, let me just actually put the logo in. So we are going to do a header and we are going to put an image there. And that image is, okay, so it doesn't. I just imagine Git's ears perking up when he notices the new files. Yes. Or, or you can imagine him like carrying in them, like Bobatan that goes there and just like start showing stuff in, in, in his hands. And so this is actually a good, um, you know, you should commit often reminder because like when you're not committed for a while, you can imagine Git with like a huge amount of, of things in his hand and it's, kind of being crushed by it. Um, so images, Bobatan logo, and then we add alt text to this. Um, I have the alt text for it somewhere. Um, let me see. I, this is all our alt text document. Uh, and it should have it here. Um, I can copy some of it and then we will change it. Um, we will add it. Let's go back to the site and here, and here is the alt text and the, this is not the character roster. This is the logo for the Fujoga Joshi Guide to Web Development. Um, the graphic is in aqua, orange, and pink text. The graphic is aqua, orange, and pink text rounded by lavender pattern. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this looks good. So I saved this and now this does, do you not? Okay. Um, and now, yeah, there it is. Uh, it's been added. Um, and what else? I said we would put this in and then that I would put uh, um, a beginning of the text. So we are doing the adder and then we are doing the project. Again, I'm just gonna copy paste and we are gonna put this in a main tag. So we have the adder section, header is a semantic tag um, for like an HTML semantic tag. It's useful for screen reader to be able to um, to distinguish between different parts of the page. Uh, you, you can see here um, VS Code is very, very helpfully uh, giving a description of what the header element is. Um, contains a group of introductory or navigational aids. So this is where we would put a menu and in this case also the title. And then where the main content of the on the page goes is um, in the main tag. And here I'm going to copy that. We can only have one H1. And now when I refresh this, I don't know why it doesn't auto refresh. Um, but when I refresh this here, the project, it's all done. 
And let's say this is enough for now. I made this change and I'm satisfied with it. So I want to save it. Now, I'm going to go back to my terminal and I am going to say git status always. I, I always do it at this point. Um, and you can see I modified index.html. So it knew about index.html, but now it, it's modified it. Uh, and then I have untracked file in images. So I go and I add everything got with git add dot do git status again. And now in the changes to be committed, uh, I can see both the logo and the modified index.html file. And now I, I, I commit them. Uh, first of all, this is actually called staging because uh, I, I didn't say it. Uh, but when you take a change you made and you prepare it for commit, that's called your staging the change. Um, and you can choose to only stage some files if you're making edits to a lot, but you want to split it in commits that make sense. So for example, I could do add the image and then add the image to the page. That's something you, you can do. Um, but right now I'm just going to do it myself. So commit, message of commit, um, add the, the initial content. It's committed. I look at the logs. You can say that I have um, two different commits. This thing here, it's called the SHA. Uh, it's a commit ash. It's a, uh, it's just a series of numbers that uniquely identify that particular commit. Um, and so you see, we have the older one that it's added HTML boilerplate, and now we have the added initial content one in addition to it. So now, if I go back to GitHub, let me. If I go back to GitHub here and I refresh, nothing has really changed. And that's, that's expected. Assume now that I want to make this change. Now I'm like, okay, I am happy with this change. Usually you, you make a, a, a few of them before, before you do this, but like you're happy with this change and now you want GitHub to, uh, to sync with yourself, uh, with your repository again. So you just git push and that's it. It's a, a lot of, oh, sorry. I have not actually show you my VS code. Uh, I git pushed. Uh, I got a bunch of tags that we're only really gonna look. And now when I go back to, to the browser and refresh, now the changes are there, but that's cool. But what's even cooler is that if I now go to the, um, let me just go there. If I now go to the fujowebdev.versal.app website here, it has already updated. So as soon as my change goes from my local repository to the one I've created in GitHub through a push. Vercel and all this style of hosting automatically changes the website for me. And that's pretty great. I love it. it it's useful. Um, you don't have to fiddle with the file upload, not upload. Um, amazing. I love it. Really, honestly, one of the of the best reasons to learn uh, Git and GitHub, but not not one of the best, but not the best one. We'll see the best one in a second. Okay, so that that's it. We're there, and now let's say that I want to uh, start styling this. Um, and let's assume that this is. Let me let me go back to the. Whoop, VS code. Uh, so I want to start, I want to start styling this and I want to, uh, you know, keep the main website as it is right now. I don't want to, uh, 
you, you know, it may, now we're going to do this in just one day, but it may take me a few days uh, to make that change. And I don't want to be blocked on finishing it before I, uh, before I continue. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I want to change a type on my main site or something. You don't want to end up with your code, with, a, with code that is half finished. Um, and now you can't make a change because you can't push your half done code to, the, to your website. But also you can't go back to where it was before. All complicated. So I want to keep, I want new changes and I want this to be completely separate. To do this, I create a branch. Um, and, and, and a branch literally is just a split in the code. Now there are two different um, points. There, there is a diverging point where my code splits and has completely separate changes and history of the changes. So the way you do it, there are a few, but I like switch um recently and let's give it a name um let's call it styling or something so here it says which to a new branch called styling and you can see that my here my command line has changed to here it it was used to be main and now it's this say styling there um what that, that just tells us we are in a branch called styling now. And, uh, you know, you, you are not going to get this on every terminal. There are configuration that allow you to uh, get this information when you're on, on a Git repository. Just, just saying if it doesn't happen for yours, there are ways uh, to make it to get this to work. But Let's start styling. So first, I am going to create actual style tags. And we're going to put our CSS in here. The first thing I am going to do with the CSS is add this handmade CSS reset that we made. Um, a CSS reset, if you've never heard of the concept, is, uh, th there are many, there are many out there. And what they do is they make your website, pr uh, make the default of the browser a bit prettier and a bit more consistent. Um, they, they vary a lot in like how much they actually fix and change, but the reason they they are used is that browser have had a long long evolution and especially in the past some really puzzling choices in terms of what their defaults were uh, and so you make a css reset and that gives you an, a nice place to start from this is a css rule um you get star so this apply to all html element box sizing border box um makes get css uh, sizing to make a little bit more sense um and oh it also changed we changed the font and i need to add my 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 style sheet that has the the um the actual font so I added this reset and now if I go to, uh, let me get the browser. Ooh. If I go to, uh, is this my local? No, that's not my local. Here is my local. If I go to refresh this, the, the, the font has changed. I don't know if you can see it there, but the font has changed. Um, and yeah, so we are, we're, we're going there. Uh, commit, you should commit often, so uh, I can commit here. One cool thing if you're using VS Code, it has this nice source control uh, tab that runs the, the git commands for you. So you can click here and it will run git add for you and you can say it says that index, h index HTML has been staged 
Now you can put a message here and says uh, add um, CSS reset and fonts. And then you click commit and there it is. If you go back to the terminal now, you can, and you git log, you can see this add CSS resets and font has now been added. Um, and yeah, and, and these were the previous one, added the initial content, added the HTML boilerplate. Uh, so now if you are looking at this history, um, you can also see here that there are some further names at the side of each commit. And what this is, these are the names of our branches. So this is saying our main branch, the one we were using um, before is now currently at the added initial content commit and our styling branch, the one that we are at currently um, as one more commit, which is add CSS resets and fonts. Let me add a couple more changes and then we'll, we'll, we'll switch branch a little bit. I'll show you how, how, how things work like in practice. Um, so let's see, let's also style our body tag. Um, so here, one of the first things I'm gonna do with our body tag is I'm going to define some CSS variables. I've, uh, I've already, said I have made this code so just to be a bit quicker I'm gonna copy and paste it and save it and here are CSS variables now how do CSS variables work um I mean if if you know the the concept of variables in programming they work mostly the same in in, in practice, what they do is they allow you to define names for, uh, in this case, specific colors, a width. Um, yeah, they, they are variables. Um, and then you can use these in place of the value that they contain in the code. So for example, if we want to do our text with Fujo Purple, uh, and then we decide, oh no, I want to change what color Fujo purple is. We can just change it where the variable is and wherever this variable is used, uh, it's going to get the same color. And you can recognize CSS variables because they start with this dash dash. But to see how this actually works, let's get the background color. Oh, oh. Uh, sorry, my cat did a sound. So background color, now we want it to be the vari a variable. So we, we wrap it with var and then Fujo cream in this case. So we save, we go refreshing and now it's Fujo cream. And similarly, we want the color of the text by default to be uh, the text color base. So we save, we refresh, and now you cannot see it, but it's brown. Yes, that's, people can hear, can hear Satan. Hi, Satan. Um, Fujo cream. Yes, I know, I know. I, I definitely chose, walked my, myself somewhere with that name. Um, let's see what else i also want to let's say before i i finish committing i'm also going to style this the project bit and i am gonna do this by this is an h1 tag in html so i'm going to write h1 and i am going to um to add all the um, all the styling, so we have font family, which says which font to use, uh, weight, which is how how bold that font is, uh, the color. This is gonna be Fujo red. The sides, uh, three rem, 
I'm not gonna explain the difference between RAM and pixels uh, in this stream, but uh, there's a difference. But it, but it is the same concept, it's, it's a size. Um, huh? And let's do this and let's refresh. And now I know your, your uh, window is a bit smaller. Maybe I can do, make it, oh, yeah. Let me see if I can make it slightly larger. Let me know if that gets in the way. Um, but um, yeah, now it's, it's red. And I, when you look at the, when you look at the example we have, you can see there is also an outline. Well, I don't know, you can see it. There is also an outline here next to the project and we can, we want to have the same thing. And so we use this um, WebKit text stroke uh, property um, that does that, gives a stroke. So we refresh and let's get this to be very big. And you can see now that there is an outline here too. Okay, so let's say we're satisfied with this and we want to make a commit again. So terminal, git status, git uh, everything, git commit. Uh, what did we do? We um, styled, uh, styled fonts and title. Okay. And now, again, now you can see there is a new commit here and um, here our styling is at this style font and title commit. It also has, has a, a CSS resets and fonts uh, done before. And then here, oh, let me get this back one. And here on um, the third one is uh, added the initial content and bought our main branch and the origin slash main branch, which is the one that GitHub has, are stuck there. So in practice, how can you use this? As I said, uh, here you can see that we are in the styling branch and let's say I want to go back to where main was. Um, so I want to give, not give up, but I want to, uh, I'm done with my styling changes. I want to go do something different. So I can do git checkout main. And you can see now that it has changed to tell me on the main branch. And now if I go to my browser and I refresh, it's gotten back to where it was before. And then if I switch again to styling and then refresh, <laughs> sorry, my cat is, is going. Um, and, and then and then refresh, it, it, go, it went back to where styling was. Um, and this is already pretty cool if I say so myself, but What's again even cooler is that I can push this specific branch to GitHub. So now that I've done it, I can, I have this, uh, wait, sorry, no, 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 browser time. So now that I've done it, I have this cool switch here. Let me get this bigger. I have this cool switch here. And if I, and I can select the branches. If I select styling, you will see this index.html now as all the styling changes I've made. But if I go back to main, they're not there. And so this is the power of branches. But you know, this is, this is already cool, but let, I want to show you something that's even cooler. 
Because now, if I go back to my project and I go to the dashboard, I can see here that there are there is active branches, and here it says uh, open branches uh, that have been deployed, and there is a styling branch. So if I click on this, and then I click on this other address, you can see that I now have a more complicated address that, however, is pointing to my styling branch specifically instead of my main branch. Uh, to see this a bit more in practice, um, let me copy bot, let me paste bot links in the chat. And I will, so here you can see this is the Fujo web dev .vercel .app. Um the, the main address of my app. And then this is instead uh, Fujo web dev dash git dash styling dash essential dash randomness dot vercel dot app, uh, which is much more of a mouthful, but it's it's still a separate website uh, that I can go to. And they have my websites in two different states, one for each branch that I have. So if I want to, uh, for example, get a, a friend to look at my work in progress or to help me debug it, I can do that. I have a specific link for a specific branch. Um, and honestly, this is, this is called branch preview. Uh, and it's a feature that many of these, um, of these websites, um, well, businesses, products, uh, no, not just website, that, that allow you to, to auto deploy Git um, repos have. Um, Leah says, if I want to cry, Miss Boba's DM and beg her to figure out where the thing is at working. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really useful because uh, it, it's like, you know, my CSS, uh, why can't I get this thing to show up? What is my, uh, what is happening there? Why does my JavaScript button not work? This makes it so much easier because not only you can go to GitHub and actually look at the code uh, as, it, as it exists on someone else's computer, but you can even go and look at the website and try it. This is extremely useful. And as, as you can see from the stream, it's incredibly simple to get this to work. Um, so yeah, let's continue from here. Let me go back to my local and to the uh, to showing both of this and let's do some more changes. So what next? Um, what, let me go actually back to my the, what we want to create. Um, let's say that now we want to have our image and we want to start uh, centering. We, we are going to add this, this character roster and then we're going to start uh, centering everything and just make it look a bit better. Okay. And okay. So now let's start with getting the roster in. And obviously, the first thing we need to do is get the image there. There it is. And then we want to actually put it in. And so we are going to put it in with just here. Um, and we are going to do a figure with a class that uniquely-ish identifies this. We're only going to have uh, one, like it can identify more than one. Um, 
and uh uh sorry sorry got got distracted by the chat as i was saying there is going to be one but you can target more than one um and we are then going to put the image in the here add alt text that i can get from our documents this is the alt text and da, 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 where was i here the alt text and then we close the image we save we refresh there it is and we we save now here you can see i'm going back to the to the integrated vs code way of doing this you can see two changes index.html with an m to say that it's modified and then uh uh this roster with names.png with like this green sign that just says that it's new i click on this you can oh you can't see my my overlay but when i hover on the plus it says to stage all changes so that's what i'm gonna do and now this but this cha uh, changes are staged and i can add the message and so do added character roster i commit uh, i can click on sync changes and this will push it to github and it's it's there it's done uh it should if you refresh the website it should appear in a little bit um and then let's continue and i can just continue uh so now i you can see that i have a lot of content here but it is all justified to the left and very big and i want instead to uh, center it so let me start with centering um now i am going to use a flex display for this and i'm gonna start with adding it to the body um so that I can wait do I want to add the display flex to the body mm, let's do that later I don't actually know that I need it um, instead I want to start adding a max weight to all to everything in here and, uh, and as uh, Leah is reminding people in the chat this is um if you refresh uh if you refresh the the change if you refer sorry say it again we have two urls we have the canonical url uh where is the main branch and that's uh fujowebdev.vercel.app and then we have fujowebdev-git-styling the long one uh and because that, that instead is tracking the styling branch uh, because I keep pushing to the styling branch this means that uh, it's the styling URL that you need to refresh to see the updates the other one stays synced with main and I'm making no changes to main and so it will just stay um, as it is until I'm ready so let's start doing some um let's start doing some styling here I'm gonna do header and then i'm going to do max width be this variable because i have done it before and that's body width and then here in the main i want the same thing main content also should have a max width and that's the body width so i save a refresh 
and nothing changes, well, it changed here at the bottom, the project, that images don't change because I also need to um, do a max width for every image. Um, so let's, I'm, I'm thinking what the best way of doing it here, here is. Um, let's give a class name to this image here uh, and let's call it logo. And then we have roster. So let's say that dot logo and dot roster, they both have max width 100% and display block and let's refresh and now this one works but why does the other one not work um oh because it's that's a uh, roster is the figure but this has to be the emg and now it works but you know, I still think this this logo up here is a bit too big. Um, so instead of using the same code for bot, I am going to do a different one for logo. And that one is going to have more or less the same content, but I'm gonna be, the max width is gonna be 80% instead of 100 and now it's smaller. And then I am going to commit again. Uh, correctly sized um, content. And so from here we go to uh, to centering this. And to center this, now we go to body and we do a, a we use flex because flex makes it really easy to center. That used to be such a huge, huge problem in web development uh, and it's now not, uh, well, for the most part. Uh, and that's because our Lord and Savior Flex came to our rescue. Um, and so this is gonna be a bit of writing. So we're gonna go, let me try display flex. Then we are gonna say flex direction column because we want to, um, because this is a uh, flex automatically puts stuff in a row, but this is clearly a column based layout. Um, so I'm gonna save, I'm gonna show you. Nothing should have changed, nothing really didn't until we do align item center. And now it should center everything. And that's it, it works now. It's all centered and that's thanks to Flex. But you may notice that this is not, the logo is not, the project is not. Um, <laughs> Leah says, if you've been wondering, the key to responsive websites is a lot of Flex and Max Suite and something else called Media Queries. Um, yes, that's, Flex uh, is kind of the, the, the king of uh, web, uh, of like responsiveness because it, it just makes it so much easier than it used to be. Um, and Ellen is like, meanwhile, I've been playing with center, uh, like the, the HTML center tag. Um, and you know, that's, that's kind of a really, really old tag. Um, we, I haven't seen it used in years uh, and I'm going to show you how to center, like like how to do what the center tag used to do uh, in a second. But um, there has been one of the difference between older web development and current web development is this idea of separating uh, presentation and content. So here, you've seen that I first went and put the content in and then 
started styling it with CSS. Center is an HTML tag, so once you start using center to center things, you now have created, uh, you have to put that in, in that HTML, and so you are mixing the the actual content with information about how that content is going to be presented. And, you know, web developers at some point decided that that's not going to cut it. Um, and so we don't, you know, as for the most part, people don't use the center tag anymore. Instead, let me get the browser bigger and let's go inspecting elements. So, um, Chrome, this is Arc as a browser, it's not Chrome, but uh, it's based on Chromium, so we get Chrome DevTools. Uh, DevTools, you can click on things, it will show you what your, what your HTML tags, where are they, what properties they have, uh, they have assigned to them, really, really, really useful. Um, Citrus Citru say, I love how Center has been deprecated for ages, but I still see it being taught in school colleges. Oh, wow. I, I did not know that. Um, but yeah, that's why we need to, to fundraise for a guide where I can rightfully be, uh, you know, don't use Center. Uh, Kib Kibacor HR says, uh, uh, yeah, right, who is a center anymore, sweats. Um, I mean, it, it's fine. It, it's 100% fine. It's, there's just better ways now. You know, it's, it's uh, if you want to use it and that works for you, the important thing is that you make a website, you know, like that you express yourself. Um, but once you start learning the modern ways to do that, I personally believe you're not going to go back to using center as an HTML tag. Um, but what do you do instead? So as I was saying, this everything has been centered. Um, but hey, kitten. Um, everything has been centered, but you can see that this other ear and this H1 ear are still aligned to the left. Um, and that's because the, uh, you know, the their container. If you look at this, at this highlight, um, that's where the. Uh, oh, sorry. No, actually, here is header, and you can see that this header here is what's actually centered in the page because flex is on the body, and header is a direct child of it so header has been centered but what we actually do want to center is the emg uh within it so let's actually try putting that in a center tag i don't know what i suppose that will work let's try it and that centers it and it also ends up in red uh I don't know why it ends up in red. It doesn't tell me anything about. Wait. Uh, oops, sorry. I got to get both. Right. Uh, it's in red, uh, which I assume is VS Code way of telling me that I have committed crimes. Um, if I over on it, I don't even get. Uh, I don't even get a, a overlay that g tells me what it is. Uh, so I guess VS Code is really like not on my watch. Uh, okay, so this one has worked, as I was saying, this one has worked. Um, but let me remove it and I want to show how we're going to do it. So now we have we refresh, we have header and EMG is a direct descendant of it. Um, and so the easiest way of doing it did I do a display block well me no I want to keep that um so the I don't know if this will work I don't think it will so one way of doing it is you text align center and then the text will get centered um 
that should work on the project. But because this is done as a block element, not gonna go there. But the way to, to center block elements is to simply do margin zero auto. And that centers it. It's a CSS rule, uh, just learn it. And here we also have the project. And because this is simply uh, an H1 tag with text inside it, uh, you can see if I, oh, going back to browser, sorry. You can see if I over here on this H1, the whole line is highlighted. Uh, and so the H1 occupies the whole row and the, the text is within it, but it is aligned to the left. And because of that, if we want to align it to the center, we just do text align, center, and now it's done. So this is two different ways of aligning. And it depends on the type of content that you have inside. So usually if it's a block element, margin zero auto, uh, and if it's text content or inline content, uh, text align center or flex. You can, you can probably flex a bunch of things to also center. Um, I made these changes right now in my browser just to show, but let's go back to the, to the, um, to VS code and actually do them there. Um, so we said header, logo as should have margin God, I hate how small this is to make it to make it big uh, margin zero auto and then uh, the uh, h1 also needed a uh, text align center now if I refresh nothing should have changed yes Um, let's go commit this again, blah, uh, aligned, uh, content to center commit. Now there are two changes that we made. Um, uh, and you know, I can push it. And again, I'm, I'm just updating styling. Um, so in a little bit, if you refresh the styling, uh, the styling, branch preview, you will, you will see this appearing. Okay, let's see. Uh, and obviously if there are questions until now, like, let me know. Um, but let's see what next. Uh, let's, well, there is some spacing that we should add, um, but also this backers on Kickstarter button. Um, let's go with, let's go with the, um, with the backers on Kickstarter button. So, well, this, this looks like a button, but actually it's simply a link. And the reason why it's simply a link is that there is actually a difference, uh, semantically between a button and again, an anchor. Um, and the difference is buttons are usually used for actual actions. So you can imagine the ones that you would use JavaScript for, um, while links are used to go to a different page. And so here we are doing a redirect to the, uh, to the Kickstarter. And so that's going to a different page. So we don't want to, um, um, so yeah, so, so it, it, it's a link, it's not a button. So I'm going to add the Kickstarter logo cause we're going to need it. And then I am going to add a link here at the bottom that says A href. I will put that in soon, and then back as on uh, 
I'm just gonna do, do, do the actual link. We'll put the logo in in a second. And this is our link. So now if we refresh the page, there is this backers on Kickstarter link. Um, uh huh we can click on it and it should bring us there uh yeah we are at eleven thousand three hundred um we are only 700 away from our next stretch goal uh okay yeah so we have a link the link is working and now we want to start styling it so let's do let's first swap this kickstarter thing for an image and this image is gonna be images uh, kickstarter logo full and then we're gonna do an alt text uh, which is kickstarter logo save now it's gonna be a huge pecas on kickstarter uh, and so we want to start styling and to do that, uh, let's give a class to this link and we call it call to action. And I am going to put it here. And I am, uh, well, first of all, what do we need here? So it's, if I go back to our frame, um, we can start reasoning about that uh, and we need a background that's white, we need a border, we need uh, some border radius to make it look circu more circular. Um, it also has some, harder to see, but it also has some uh, shadow underneath, all of that will need to be added. So let's go one by one so first of all background color white um, let's give it some padding that's gonna be uh, 15 and 20 pixel uh, we are gonna give it a border which is going to be two pixels solid and then the variable is the kickstarter green that we defined at the beginning um and let's see how this is looking right now going back to the uh, i mean it uh i don't know if you can see it show it in the browser it definitely is looking a certain way you know not not particularly great um but it is indeed looking a certain way. I suppose that that uh, the reason it's doing it this way it's because uh, Kickstarter here is a inline element, um, so it's it's literally like going uh, to a different line. We can see that this is the issue because if I now click on this image and I go instead of here, I can add styling. Let me, oh, where did, where did you, where did you put my style? So at the bottom here, I can add the styling to the elements. And now if I go display block, uh, well, it's still looking a certain way, but different. Um, uh, well, I'm going to also have to make some changes to the A. So let's say display flex, flex direction column. You see, now it's starting to, it's starting to look better. Uh, and then let's say we want a gap between the uh, Pekason and the Kickstarter. So we do 3px and that will give some space. Well, it should in theory. Um, what else are we missing? Uh, Becca's on is 
the wrong uh, the wrong font weight so this is gonna be need to be bold it will need to be green um, I did this is a special color so I did not define it um, just copy this so it, it's slowly starting to look better uh, we do not want that underline on back as on so we do font decoration known Uh, excuse me? Oh, text decoration, not font decoration. Text decoration known, and then we do a uh, um, uh, we center things. I think I uh, we have flex, so I can do a line item center uh, that's doing something, but the image will need to be made so that we. Uh, so that it doesn't it doesn't um, go past the box and we can do this by going here and doing max width 100% on the image and then we also want this um, this back as on Kickstarter uh, 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 sorry, we want this back as on Kickstarter button to also have a max width because this is right now it's too big. So max width for 100 pixel, there it is. And then uh, um, a border radius. There, looking much better. Oh, Nina, thank you for up updating your your pledge and thank you for uh, your nice words in general. Uh, okay, so here we are. I've made a bunch of changes. These changes are have only been made on my browser window, so they're not going to be propagated to my files. Um, oh, there is a copy all CSS changes here that I did not know. Um, I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna see what happens if I go to my back to my VS code and paste it. So this is in the call to action and then I'm gonna well that's not doing anything okay what <laughs> that was, this was extremely disappointing uh, that it that it um, Sorry, I just saw Ellen making a Gap Moe joke with Flex, and I'm like, ah, that's so good. I want to make that joke. Uh, and and the the uh, and it's funny because actually, actually, uh, uh, Emmy that did uh, th that designed HTML is always saying that he's he has like his gap moe um so yes canon uh okay so i'm, I'm gonna just copy and paste things the old-fashioned way because that didn't work uh but this now does and i'm not gonna save because it's gonna it's gonna oh no it doesn't refresh this but like sometimes when you have things that automatically refresh that i did not set up uh for uh, for this particular uh, thing, but it, it will override your changes and that's terrible. And so I am uh, going to have to change also the the EMG. I need to add styling on to the image that's right under the call to action. So I can say call to action and then uh, direct descendant selector. So this is only going to target uh, the EMG tags that are straight under my call to action class. So if there is nesting and like under a bunch of nesting, there is a new EMG class that doesn't work. And this is here, the direct descendant selector. And now if I refresh, uh, well, nothing changes because in theory we, are, we have done this 
bright, but let me add this famous box shadow here and let's see that, yeah, it's, can't really see it that much, but the box shadow is there. Uh, so let me see if I've forgotten anything else. Uh -huh. Okay, now I have gotten everything uh, for that we should get here. And obviously it needs to be centered too. Um, and we can center it in a bunch of different ways. Let's see, let's try centering it straight from here. Um, it's an A, and so I think we can just do text align center. No, because um, it's display flex. What about margin zero auto? There, block element. And now I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna call this uh, uh, stage all the changes, add the message and says, and uh, back us on Kickstarter call out. Commit, sync, it should appear for you all there. Um, And you see, if you actually look at this, um, where are you? It, it's not letting me open it up further for you, but you, uh, in this very useful VS Code extension, uh, you can see a lot of, of the, like your branches here. Um, I wish this was allowing me to, to resize, it's not for some reason, but there is a lot of cool stuff that you can see, that you're also able to see through command line, but... Uh. So Alan was saying, I think this stream is going to result in me being able to make the Robin Boop Shift certificate on my shipping wall a more reasonable size and centers, so this is already life-changing and I thank you. You are extremely welcome. Um, yeah, th it's... You know, I think that's something that's really hard and, and that's part of what has inspired this guide in the first place is that modern CSS is much, much better than it used to be. Like centering, there, there, are, there is a meme about the inability of like centering a div with CSS because it used to be a huge, huge problem. Um, and, and it's just gotten so much better recently. But the difficulty that I've often seen beginners have is that because it has changed so much and because they don't have the understanding of what has come first and what has come later and what is deprecated and what is new, uh, it, they struggle, they struggle with it because they you go on Stack Overflow and you search how to center a div and someone is there and like telling you about display table or like there's so many ways that, that worked at some point. Um, and so you get confused, but it's actually, um, it's actually changed. And Ellen's also say, I definitely feel like half of what I'm using is still knowledge from 2002. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's what I've seen a lot of beginners do. Uh, and that's fine. Like, you know, it works, but it, it's a worse experience for you because the, the, the industry has moved forward. Now we can even center stuff on the page. Incredibly uh, revolutionary. Oh, though honestly, honestly, really hard fought battles. Uh, you know, you would think centering would be like at, at the um, at the front of like browsers. They're like, oh, these people want to cent center. Um, we should give the make this easy for them like immediately. No, no, it, it, it's all recent. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I have a rant here, but I will stop. Um, Ozimarkia says, literally me unable to center the div right now. Yes, um, you know, I I don't know where which of our many channels you're coming from, um, but if you're from Fandom Coders, come, come, uh, you know, show us and we'll help you center the div. Or if you have a link, can you put it? I will help you center the div. Um, Alan says, give people what they want, centered elements on the page. Now, what people want is a masonry layout that's native. But as I said, not, not, don't get me there because I, I, I have beef with browsers because they, because like masonry layouts, people have loved them since 2012. Everyone wants a masonry layout. Why is this not a default thing? Why is only Firefox implementing it? Why do you not listen to the people? Ah, okay. Okay, so, stop the ranting, stop the ranting. Let's go back to do, to do our things. Um, I think we have now graduated to, to spacing. Oh, wait, let's do also a, a nice hover state. Um, on this back as on Kickstarter button. So when we hover it, uh, right now it does nothing, but we want it to like pop. Um, yep, so let's go there. Uh, let's close this one and then let's go the our call to action, CSS class, and now with the overstate. And what we do is we, um, pretty simply, we want to uh, have a cursor that's a pointer, and then we want a bigger box shadow, and then we want to also make it slightly bigger. Uh, and so we can use this really cool property that's called transform, uh, and it will transform our div and we can do uh, we can scale it um, let's call it 1.2 and now when I hover here well when I refresh and hover you can see it at the bottom that it's becoming bigger um, but if you actually see it in the browser, it's a little bit chunky. Say it doesn't like it's it's very um, blocky. What we want to do is we want this to be a lot smoother, uh, and so we can use a property which is called transition. So we put this on the call to action and we say transition property, all, all properties, when they change, uh, make that change be in 150 milliseconds and make it be a uh, ease out change. That's um, animation. Oh, sorry, you, you aren't seeing me typing here. Uh, oops, sorry, went back to top. Uh, this transition property, it's all, all changes, uh, 150 milliseconds is how long it will take to change, and ease out is the animation curve, uh, so just like how it behaves. So when I save this and I go back to, to, um, to the page, now it's a bit smoother. Let me see if I try to do it like in 750 milliseconds. See how much slower it is? That's the transition property. So in a hover state, you can apply transforms, you can apply different opacity, you can apply a bunch of changes, and then you add the this transition property and that makes it a bit smoother. Um, so with that said, 150 milliseconds, uh, 1.2 scale 
is a bit much. Uh, the scale 1.01. 1 .01? I don't know how much. I guess this works. It's very, it's very small. Um, but yeah, it works. So we now have a transition. Um, and now I can commit and just say add the uh, transition on hover for Kickstarter link. Commit and sync changes. So now I'm going to make one last change uh, and that change is going to be the spacing. And after I'm done with the spacing, we are going to take all the layout changes I've made and we are going to, uh, to take them and merge it in the main branch. So remember we had a main branch, which is where we started uh, and that's still there with our very old code. As you can see, because if I check it out and then I refresh this, we are back to where we were. While if I check out styling and then refresh, ta-da, the website is now at the, it's now with all our changes. Um, so, but you know, I, I, once we have styling, well, once we have that spacing, um, I will be at a point where I'm comfortable with this becoming my, uh, my main uh, web, like the, the page that's actually shown to people that go to the main address. So uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, spacing, spacing, okay. Let's go back here. Um, so what spacing do we need? So first of all, we need some spacing between this header and the uh, header at the bottom. Um, we can do a uh, margin bottom on the header. Then uh, where are you header? It's here. Now it has a margin bottom of 35 PX. And then we need some spacing between the roster and the And the H1, okay. I think the H1, I'm looking because I don't want to. There's so many ways of doing this. I just want to be, um, I just want to be consistent with what I had done before. Um, so the roster, the H1, we're going to apply a top border to it. And we're going to use this margin block start property. You may, um, you may not have seen margin block start before. It's a, um, it's kind of a newish property, uh, cause it's similar to margin top when you are in a, uh, in like a Western environment where things are uh, displayed in column while there are some um, some languages that are read like with different right to left, left to right. And this one will, uh, this one is, is semantically means the same thing regardless of the direction while margin top uh, what does stop mean when the website, when the language has a different way of reading it? Um, so that's that's what this why this property has has started. But it is for the specific site right now. It's basically equivalent to margin top. Um, and I think the backers on Kickstarter button is our next thing to give a margin to, and similarly. Um, where are you? I guess we have, we have some, um, sorry, let me save and let me see where we are at. Okay. 
So we have some space in there, but we're still missing the paragraph and the Becca's on Kickstarter button. So let's do the paragraph. And we are going to say that the paragraph is going to have two properties. The line height, we're going to make it a bit, bi a bit bigger because that's going to look much better. And again, one margin top. And there it is, that has also changed. And then the Becca's on Kickstarter button, uh, which is the call to action, is also going to have uh, here a certain line height too. I'm going to add that one too. And there we are. Uh, There we are. Obviously this is like at the very bottom of the page and that's not great. So let me go to the body and let me add some padding there. Uh, do I wanna do it on the body or do I wanna do it on the main? I'm gonna do it on the main. Here is some padding for the main. Oh, that's on the side, not on the bottom. Um, I guess I can just, let me just do it do it this way it should be the same oh yeah no i am uh, i'm sorry this is my bad totally my bad uh this needs to go on the body um padding um this is padding block 20 pixel and now there should be yeah now there is a nice um, and some more some nicer spacing. And I think this is correct. This looks correct. Um, and so I'm gonna do uh, gonna commit these changes. I'm gonna uh, do fix spacing. Um, hmm. I'm gonna sync them. And let's say the last, okay, I said this was the last change, but I wanna do one more. Um, and I want that to be that we can also click on the, on the picture to go to the Kickstarter. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go wrap the picture into an A, into a link. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh -uh. That works and we have $10 more. So yeah, um, again, add link uh, on roster pick commit and I didn't add anything so it just me just asks me oh you don't see it um I have a pop-up that says there are no stage changes to commit would you like to change all your changes and commit them directly so it's basically saying you didn't uh, add anything uh, for this commit do you want me to just take all your files and add them yes I do want that I think changes, it's done. And now I can go, let me go to the browser. And now I can go here and I can go back to our Git styling branch and I'm gonna refresh. And I am going to see that it looks much better. It has the links where it was supposed to have them. So here is a link I can click, as I said. Uh, so now it's it's working, it's working. Uh, what, uh, Ellen is asking, why does it think you didn't change anything? Uh, no, it wasn't thinking I didn't change anything. It was, it was saying you have no changes that you have marked for, um, that, that you want to add to this specific commit. So it, it knows that I have changes. It's just that you want to add these changes explicitly before you save them 
um, and I didn't do it. And so it just asked me, do you want me to just do them all for you? Anyway, if I go to GitHub uh, main branch, again, it's like where it used to be. And then the styling branch is as instead all our changes, including you can see this the last thing I did with the roster, uh, which is connected to a link. And now this works, but what if I want to stop making the changes? Like I'm satisfied with the changes on my styling branch and now I want to promote in a way this to be the main branch and so this is this process is what's called uh, a pull request uh, when you when you do this on github it, it's called a pull request and you can see here on the main page of this repository it says styling at recent pushes two minutes ago what this means is I synced my local repository, uh, the styling branch of my local repository with the styling branch of the GitHub repository two minutes ago. And it's just letting me know uh, that that's a thing that happened. And I can click this nice compare and pull request button and it's opening a pull request you let's set this one aside for a second uh, you can see here that it tells me there's nine commits in this pull request i have changed three file and it's been done by one contributor that's me uh, here are all the commits that are going to be part of this pull request um, and that's these commits are the ones i've added to styling that are however not in main So it, it's doing a it's doing a difference. It's like I know where main was, and I know that you have styling, and I know that styling has more commits than main had. So here, when you do a pull request, let me get all the new ones and put them in here. Um, shows like the files changed. This we didn't have them before. Uh, index here you can see in green all the things that were added and I can just look at this and make sure that things make sense and then the pull request you know reviewers assignees milestone this is like this is professional stuff not not what we're here to do today um, let's give it a meaningful name uh, update to uh, the first version of our new layout uh, and here you can write messages i guess we will have uh, a section on how to make uh, a, a good pull request message um can't wait to write it so that i also become good at it um uh, anyway we, we create a pull request and here it is uh you can see one pull request here on top um the name the the other nine commits uh Vercel, it's like very nice so it, it automatically creates a link to the preview which brings us to the website um, and once i have done i have correctly identified that everything is good um can click on the files change again to look at it can click on every single commit and see uh oops, sorry that's not the right one uh, and i can see what this has changed with respect to the previous one i i can do a bunch of things but what's most important is i can i'm gonna go that doesn't matter just gonna do rebase um And then if I click this rebase and merge button, I will be able to merge what as is in my styling branch, which was is in my main branch. And so if I go on Fuji Web Dev now 
and I go to index.html and this is, look, it's the main branch. Uh, it, now it has everything that was on the, on the styling branch. And if I go on the, uh, sorry, this was my other one, but if I go on the old one and I refresh, now even the main website has the right styling. And that's it. That's how that's how developing a website with um, Git and GitHub works. And it has it has also a lot of features. Like we use this to collaborate, um, and I will be very happy with time to to collaborate with people on like this actual website. And we can do it because the code is shared. Um, but speaking of shared code, let me also show one more thing um so here and let's just go to vs code now this was my styling branch let me go back you know i can click here and i can go on the main branch directly another trick um oh you might not have seen it because it's it's here you can click there this overlay is new and yeah, I guess we are learning how well it works. Um, uh, sorry, got distracted. Uh, so now we are on main and you can see that this file is very small. It's how it used to be on, um, on, on our repository, on our GitHub. It has not automatically updated. We have done that merge, but this is still where it used to be. So you can see this also because if you do, I'm on main. If you do git log, um, you see the the uh, the last commit we have is at 2:34. That was around one hour ago, and we we have moved on. Now we are um, we, we have done changes on GitHub through the, uh, the pull request process. So that main has changed and now we want our main to change in sync with that. And the way to do this is we pull information. And that's it. Now, if you look, it basically just telling us that it has created a new file, that's the Kickstarter logo, the roster with names, and our index.html has 103 new lines. So indeed, if I go look at my index.html file here, and again, look here at the bottom, here I'm on the main branch, it has now changed. It's now exactly how it look, like it was on GitHub. Um, and even if I go on my local, well, and refresh, that's it. That's uh, that's done. Like it, it's how it is. Uh, but we are. I was gonna go for a couple hours, and there's more edits I can do. But I would say that this is mostly enough uh, for today. And um. There is one more thing. Git gave GitHub 103 insertions. Uh, I, I kind of want to say it's the opposite. Uh, like GitHub gave, you know, I think the remote with the local. So I don't know. Um, we, clearly, that's something that, that we will need to discuss uh, very, very seriously as we go build the, the canon. Um, But um, so I was saying, I think this this works for today. This is uh, uh, this is a good overview. But the one thing I want to show you is this. So terminal again, git log, and here is where my main and origin main is, and I go blah blah blah. You know, I can look at all my commits. 
So let's say that I want to go back to uh, this commit where I added the character roster. This, is, uh, this was at 3 p.m. So it's been quite a while ago. So I can copy this SHA here. Uh, SHA is like a unique identifier that blah, blah, blah. It's the name of the commit. It's, a, it, it's definitely a mouthful, but that's what it is. And now I can do git checkout and that number. And you can see here I have uh, uh, now my branch. It's, uh, it, it's just a commit. I have checked out that commit. And now if I refresh, we have gone way, oh, uh, sorry, browser. We have gone way back. I can even do, um, I can even go to check out the very first commit and then git checkout. I'm gonna go bot so you can see, git checkout. This is the shot of my very first commit. Uh, and then a refresh and we are back to the, to the very, very first thing that we started. And now I wanna be like, oh, you know, uh, okay, I, I've looked at how it was and like, you know, I want to go back to my canonical one. You just do git checkout main and you're back and there it is. It's all, it's back. And like literally anytime we hit, we, we created a commit, we can go back there. Um, and you can imagine how useful this is for the bugging. Um, yeah, like I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like clearly, clearly it's very useful. You, you can be like, oh, when did this problem start happening? Um, and just look at that and figure it out. Um, it, it is pretty, pretty amazing. And like catching up with the chat, uh, Ellen says it's really cool to be able to compare the before after so easily. It really is. Um, and, and you know, this is like now we, we have done things in a couple hours, right? Um, but imagine this over a very, very long period of time. It's like imagine being able to see how your website looked uh, two years ago. You can do it like three months ago. You can, you can do it. It's, it's there, it's saved forever. Um, and you know, especially when you go sync it with GitHub, assume that you change computer, you can go back to GitHub, uh, download the repository from there. And again, you find your whole, not only your whole website as it used to, uh, as it is on GitHub, but all the history of it. So you, you end up with this, um, with the saved history of all the code changes that you've made uh, that's easily uh, stored somewhere else for everyone to see or privately if you want. There is also that option for everyone to work on together, but also for you to, to pull back and work on. Uh, MDL Bear says you can use git diff commit to see the exact difference between the head of the current branch and the given commit. That makes sense. Let's try it. There are so many, there are so many git commands. Uh, so I'm gonna just copy the one that I checked out before. Let's see what happens. Yeah, um, here. You can see as it say, uh, as the plus and green means that you have, these have been added. Uh, and so these are all the differences. See, we have removed that H1 in our first commit that says, welcome to the Fujo guide website, and then went down and added all of this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what git diff does. You, you can actually see the changes. Uh, and I, I wanna say this is it all. I will, after this set up, the um, set up the the URL 
with my with my with the actual Fujo web dev no it's fujoweb.dev URL so you'll be able to go there and see the site without the vercel.app um, uh, but as far as the uh, as creating the website goes and explaining git and github I think this is a good place to stop uh, Alan says the thing I can thinking of is it's like seeing the history of a wiki page and comparing revisions y yeah no I mean I think it makes sense and I think what particularly cool about um, modern web development and some of the of the offerings that are there um, is that you can generate automatically generate pages from Markdown, for example. So um, our fandom coders wiki, our Boba board wiki, they use this thing called DocuSaurus that allows you to um, create Markdown files and automatically generate a wiki. So when you go compare, when you go like to commit on those mark markdown files and like upload them to GitHub and do the same process that we have done today, uh, that's what you end up with. You literally end up being able to see the history of a wiki page and compare revision. Like literally, that's what that's what ends up happening. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty cool. And that's part of why I'm really excited to. Um, be able to teach this to fandom folks because I think people are really gonna love it and it's getting it's gotten a lot easier in recent year and it's just gonna get easier um, and it's very powerful and yes you can we can maybe one day with enough hard work um, stop using fandom.com for our wiki and just like do ours And uh, if there are any questions, I'm gonna on like this, whatever, really. Um, I will be here, I guess, another, until there are no more questions. So feel free to ask. Alan is thanking uh, me for hosting and thank you all for coming. This has been fun. I love doing this. <laughs> so when do Git and GitHub smooch each other? I think we have not covered that yet. I mean the the we definitely we definitely haven't yet but I mean it's it's like this push and pull process you know it's git commit stuff to memory and then like they share their memories and yeah yeah like y y you know there is very many ways to uh make that be dirty and I am not here to limit anyone uh, I am very excited at the idea of people uh, letting me know how this push and pull process actually works uh, please do let me know I am I am extremely excited to see everyone's take on this Alan says they're intertwined they really are they really are. Um, I think it's it's a very interesting character dynamic, the idea that they can share memories with each other. Um, and also we, we haven't we haven't really touched it here. Uh, but there are there are ways in which you can have some files that are not uploaded uh, to GitHub when you push. So like you can start doing things about oh the secrets that it that Git doesn't like GitHub, no. Um, yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, I am... Uh, oh, wait, if you someone wanted to get started before our guides are released, do you have any basic direction you point them in to brush up on anything they're rusty with? Um, 
Well, first of all, I'm going to say that we are going to be releasing intermediate guides so, so that like people uh, can, uh, you know, let us know if they work. So there is definitely going to be at least a little bit of uh, content that we're going to make before it's published. Uh, for, for other content, um, we really should put up a page. I want to say MDN as some resources on learning web development. MDN is the Mozilla Developer Network. Um, and yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good place to start. Um, we are, I have like a lot of beginners that have told me resources, but I don't remember them off the top of my head. Um, my suggestion is keep doing it, keep studying, keep trying to do pages and, you know, fancoders.com, you can sign up and we will help you figure out if your code is, um, if there are better ways to do what you're trying to do that. That's my take. Uh, Ozzy Marquez says, uh, thank you for your time. Very excited about this project. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for your time uh, coming here. And yes, I'm glad you're excited. I am so excited about this project and like seeing the response to it has been great because I really believe in, um, I really believe in the need for this and it, in its ability to make a difference. Leah says, Free Code Camp is a good responsive web design course that starts at the beginning, but were really useful for me to brush up on new CSS and ARIA. Um, yeah, Free Code Camp is also a good resource. Um, I think, you know, there is a... Some people like some more than others, and it's not always the same ones that you like. Uh, but Free Code, Ca Free Code Camp and uh, developer, Mozilla Developer Networks should have fairly up-to-date resources. I don't know exactly Free Code Camp how it works, but I bet that you can find, if, if there are more courses, I bet you can find which ones um, work best for you and are more recent. Leah says, I do not like the Free Code Camp JS course, but the responsive design one was good. Good to know. And yeah, you know, there's different, there's different writers, there's different uh, courses and some are better than others. Um, okay, I think we're done. So thank you all for coming, feel free to stay in the chat and chat more. I think the chat stays available even if I stop the stream. Uh, and we might do this again. So, uh, and continue from where for where we left off. There is definitely a lot I wanna do with, with, web, with, with this website and because it's uh, such a, um, well, it's a long-term project, we, um, hopefully can get to build it together uh, in time. Okay, thank you all for coming. I'll see you on the other side. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.